So the following video is a quick look at some technology called ChatGPT. It's an AI engine that basically uh, will give English-like answers and let you communicate with it in an English-like way. I want to look at it and how it might affect, I guess, education, I guess, testing thing and assessing students, basically how it will affect Detection of non-original answers to questions in the assessment process. So what I did was I just went through and picked up some standard HSC questions from a variety of subjects, just plugged them into this uh, AI engine. This is basically, this video is a demonstration of the answer, the sort of quality of answers that ChatGPT can produce this is the intro page to GPT. You can just type down the bottom there. So first off, I went and got a chemistry question. I uh, just copied it it's from 2021, placed it in there, and you can see the results coming out. I guess you need to be a chemistry teacher to evaluate whether that's a good answer or not. Now, the interesting thing is that this process can be improved upon. In other words, you can ask subsequent questions. You can ask to summarize or clarify, things like that. That was just an example of that. Then I went to geography, just to have a look at a multiple choice question. So I hunted around for a good one that didn't refer to a picture. So I got that, just copy, paste that in. And you can see that it doesn't just give you an A, B, C, or D. It actually gives you a justification of why it chose its answers, which is actually better than what Nessa gives you. Then we're at economics, and it's like an analysis question, I guess. I just want to show that it can do it, some sort of analysis. And there you go again. Once again, I'm not sure of the accuracy of these answers, but... I know in the computer domain where I've tested it, it looks pretty good. And finally, even English isn't immune, so I just copied a text. And it's a bit cumbersome here because you copy the text and it immediately starts trying to summarize what it is. So I just let that run. What I really wanted to do was put in the HSC question, but I had to let it run until it had finished analyzing. That's my lack of knowledge on how to use the interface. And then I asked it to summarize the text in a single paragraph. I asked it to summarize it using simpler language. So you can see that this is generative, right? It's generating on the spot. And then finally, I copied and pasted the analysis question in, and it generates an analysis. So these are just examples of how you can use this tool to answer fairly complex, what we would consider human-like questions. So that was just a demo, really. It's um, quite a complex tool. You need to play with it and use it a little bit to get used to it. It's actually designed as a conversational sort of tool so that you really go to and fro and it learns from what you're talking about. But anyway, this is a new tool. It's um, just out of interest, released by a company called OpenAI, which is was um, originated, um, one of the originators was Elon Musk. Um, just out of interest, and it's very new. Okay, so it was only released in November 2022, and it will get better. AI gets better as it's fed more information, and its knowledge base at the moment is limited to 2021, so keep that in mind. So the other thing to keep in mind is that it's a very generative tool. So what that means is that it's generating new text. It's not like it's the text has existed before, and it means that Turnitin will not detect this sort of work. Uh, so they'll need new tools to maybe detect this, maybe not. There are people working on trying to detect work generated by AI, but so far the work is not looking that promising. Um, this is almost certainly going to replace 
the way we interface with search engines like Google and whatever else, it almost certainly the way we will be interfacing with a computer, I think, within the next few years. And it's almost definitely got to affect the education industry. Um, you could see just by those few answers for the HSC, it actually gives better answers than NESA is releasing to us currently. Uh, finally, it's being invested in pretty heavily. I've noticed in the last few days, I think uh, Microsoft is like wanting to plow about $10 billion or something into it. So it's clearly going to generate a lot of cash. And even if uh, chat GPT isn't the tool that ends up making it, it's clear that it's going to be a class of facilities out there that is fundamentally going to change the way uh, we, I guess, interface with the computers and internet and knowledge bases that are out there. And it's also going to fundamentally change the way students produce work. Um, and I can say from a coding point of view, from a, an IT point of view, uh, the, the way um, it can demonstrate to students how to, uh, how to solve particular programming problems is pretty astounding and fundamental. So anyway, that was just um, just a very quick look. I, I would advise everyone to go and have a look at it themselves, um, use it in their own domain where they can evaluate it the best. Uh, it's a really, really interesting tool and sort of just, yeah, worthy of keeping an eye on over the next year. So I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of your break and I'll see you in the next semester.